power in the blood. There is no other power but the blood of Jesus. God ordained it that way. It is the blood of Jesus that washes us clean, past, present, and future. We stand pure before God. That's what the Bible says. And the Lord wants us to know that today. I think He wants to impress on us how precious the blood of Jesus is and, and how powerful it is. And then on the heels of that, He wants us to talk about the, the Teacher, the Holy Spirit. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place. And we pray, Lord, that you will reveal to us that you will speak deep into our hearts and spirits. Oh God, the deep truths of the Word of God and of, of your will for us in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. Let's first of all talk about the, the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, this great verse, these great verses that we just read said to us that the Holy Spirit will take everything that Jesus has and He will show it to us. Friends, that means we can have confidence. That means we walk in boldness. That means we walk in the supernatural. You are no longer just a human being. <laughs> now you have the Holy Spirit living in you and revealing things to you and showing you things in the supernatural. i, I got to share just quickly a, a testimony to that. Last Saturday as we were uh, having the gospel outreach, Riney and, and the team and y'all, uh, about halfway through the afternoon, um, this group of people pulled up into the parking lot and, and they were all smiling and all happy. They said, we, we just heard about what you guys were doing at a garage sale just down the road here. And we wanted to come join you. Can we come join you? I said, yeah, come on, come join us. They said, uh, we, we've just been to a seminar and, and about uh, peace in the neighborhood and, and can we pass out some of our stuff? I said, can I look at it first? Uh, they said, yeah, you can look at it first. Here, take one of these. And, and I, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit say, look on the back of the cover. Look on the back page. And I turned to the, and then I'm thumbing through and keep, you know, the Holy Spirit a couple of times, look on the back page. Do you want to hurry up? Get to the back page. Look on the back page. So finally, I looked to the back page and the bottom in small print, it says, these are the stars. These are the studies and the writings of L. Ron Hubbard. There you go. That would be the Church of Scientology. And, and, they, and, and they wanted to, pat, and I said, you know, you guys are welcome. But, but none of your literature is welcome. You can come, hear the Gospels, come enjoy the food, come celebrate Jesus with us. But, but none of this literature is welcome. They, and they, they wanted to argue with me a little bit, which the cults are trained to argue, especially with Christians. They said, well, Jesus said, uh, there are many paths to heaven. I said, no, he did not. You need to go back and read the Bible. Because Jesus said, there is only one pathway to heaven, and it's through Jesus. There is no other way. There's no other way, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, so, so I said to them, there are, uh, there are lots of paths to Jesus. There are lots of ways that people get to Jesus. 
but he is the only way to heaven. And uh, that kind of ended the argument right there. <laughs> or, or excuse me, the conversation. And they, they stayed a distance off. Some of you that were there will probably remember some people that set a distance off and had their fried chicken and enjoyed you know the music from a distance and then left uh, soon after that. But friends, it was one of those Holy Spirit moments where the Holy Spirit revealed to me that something that I needed to see. And, and you know, part of my job uh, is to protect the flock. And, and I, I don't take that lightly. I take that very, very seriously. And, and uh, sometimes, you know, I, I can be a little guilty of being a little overprotective, but I'd rather be a little overprotective, okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So you guys, uh, the Holy Spirit, we walk in the supernatural, and there are times when the Holy Spirit will whisper those things and will reveal things to you. He wants to do that on a daily, moment-by-moment -moment basis. He wants you to walk so closely with Him that, that He is constantly guiding you leading you. Praise the Lord. Friends, as we read this passage of Scripture, maybe another way to say it is, it is impossible to learn of what Jesus is apart from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because He reveals, He teaches. And, and the Holy Spirit makes everything, uh, He is the organizer, He's the director, He is guiding us to be a witness to this culture, and how to minister to the people of our time. The Holy Spirit is the commander-in-chief of God's outreach ministry to this world. And He will lead you, He'll train you, He'll empower you, He'll give you the equipment you need and the anointing you need to touch your world. Amen. Your family, your neighbors, your school, where you work. And friends, even if something, some tool, some method that we use may be precious to us. If the Holy Spirit says, no, I want you to go this direction, then that's what we need to do, both individually as families and as a church. Amen. Amen. We, we want to be doing what the Holy Spirit guides us to do. And I want to, I want to share with you quickly five things that will help you hear the Holy Spirit's voice. And the first one is the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God. Spending time in the Word of God. Friends, and, and there are times when I have to set the, the read the Bible through list aside because in my OCD-ness, I want to check the box and hurry up and check the box and get on to the next chapter. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other OCDs in the room? Come on. Come on. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Okay. OCD. We love Jesus, but we get a little OCD from time. Okay. So we need those times where we set the take the watch off. Set the time pieces aside. In fact, you know what? We, we get ourselves too busy smiling. Whatever. We, get, we get too many boxes that we want to get checked off. At least some of us in the room. You know, others of us don't understand that. But that's okay. But there are times when we, uh, we need to just set the schedule aside. And regularly be alone with the Word of God and the presence of God. And and go slowly through and let the Holy Spirit reveal things to you. Not be in a hurry to check the box, okay? And then the second thing is prayer. Time in the presence of God in prayer. The third thing is church. Hey, and can, I, can, we, can we camp out there for a minute? Just, just for a minute. Can I ask you, when we're singing, can I ask 
you not to read the bulletin or check your Facebook or check the news, whether it's whether you're in the, the fake news or the real news. Can I ask you to do that? And, and here's one of the main reasons. Number one is because you need the presence of the Lord. You, you came here to be in the presence of the Lord, and if you're stuck reading the bulletin or checking your Facebook, you're going to miss it. Amen. You're going to go away dry. You're not going to get what the Holy Spirit has for you. Go ahead and say amen. The second thing is, second reason I'm asking you to do that is because you're being watched. That's right. Mom, mom reads the bulletin and she checks her Facebook, so that's how I go to church. Oh, me. Not, not amen. Oh, me. And we wonder, we wonder where the, the next generation is. If, we're, if church is not something important to us, if the presence of the Lord is not something important to us, we wonder where are they? Well, that's where they are. Let's, let's, the, the, uh, the next one is fellowship with other believers. Amen. Fellowship. Deep, you know, there are times when you're, when you just got to get with a brother or sister in Christ, phone, phone a friend and, and have a prayer meeting, whether it's in person or on the phone. Amen? Amen. And the last one that will help you, these are to help you hear the Holy Spirit. The Word, prayer, church, Fellowship, and the last one is ministry. Doing something for God. Hopefully, at least tangentially connected to His church. Doing something for God. Ministry. I can't tell you the numbers of times I've heard people say to me, I, I love teaching Sunday school because I'm learning more about the Word of God. I love leading this group or that study because I'm learning more. Yeah. It's, it's powerful, friends. Okay, we're going to move on. I want you to, I want you to look at a, a very important quote. I consider that the chief dangers which confront the coming century to be religion without the Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, Forgiveness without repentance. Salvation without regeneration. Politics without God. And heaven without hell. Anybody, anybody recognize that? Almost a hundred years ago by William, General William Booth of the Salvation Army. Wow. Almost a hundred years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, and that was a prophetic word, wasn't it? Because that's that's where we are, and be probably worse than that, probably beyond that. Yeah. Friends, we need to, and it's a wake-up call for us to realize where we are. Well, you you look at that list, and that and that's where we are. And we we desperately need to turn back to God. We desperately need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> working in us and, and leading us, friends. The Holy Spirit uh, was not sent just to make up for, the, for Jesus leaving and going back to heaven. He was sent to multiply the ministry of Jesus many times over in you and me. Mm -hmm. And that's why we desperately need Him. He was, he, he's here to run the operation, friends, and give us wisdom and power and, and even creativity. Because he's the one behind all the, the work of God. And if we think for a minute that our efforts in, in our humanness alone will get the job done, then we are making deals with the devil. Yes, sir. That's good we, if we think we can do church, or even if we think we can do the Christian life without the Holy Spirit, we are dancing with the devil. That's right. We desperately need him. You desperately need him. Everywhere, all the time. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Second thing I want to want you to see from the Word of God is don't be fooled by the devil. 
Just as the devil tried to fool Jesus and tempt Jesus. We're going to look at that in Luke chapter 4 in just a minute. But, but friends, the temptation that that the devil tries to get to you and I with from time to time is to try to do the Christian life in our own strength. How many of you have ever been frustrated by that? <laughs> Let's all just raise our hands together now, shall we? We've all tried to do this thing in our in our own Christian, in our own flesh. Amen. And, and that is a prescription for disaster. Yes. We, we were never designed. God didn't tell us to go and, and live the Christian life and be like Jesus in our own strength. He said, you can only do it with the Holy Spirit living in you and working in you. You can only do it by my presence in your life and in everything else. Friends, the, the devil comes because he wants us to be frustrated. He wants to whisper in, in our ear, well, you're just not good enough. You're just not good enough. If you just if you just do it this way or do it that way or do it in your own strength. No, no. Don't, don't fall prey to that. Luke 4, verses 5 through 8, then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. <laughs> this, now we're getting to the good part. Are you ready? <laughs> and Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Amen. Jesus was not impressed by Satan's lies, and neither should you be. Here's the Son of God, worshipped by legions of angels throughout all time, and he's supposed to be tempted with the kingdoms of this earth? Not a chance. <laughs> These puny little pipsqueak Satan temptations, friends, and you and I need to have that same perspective. Satan, you're not going to tempt me with this little puny temptation. I, I, I'm a king's kid. That's right, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a ruler and a, and, a, and a king and a priest and a queen. And a priestess. Amen. Oh, friends, I, I hope you get that. Hope you get that. Amen. So Satan comes and tempts and Jesus knew the kingdoms of this world were not Satan's to give. And you and I need to get that in our spirit as well. He'll come and lie to you and try to tempt you and try to haul you off into some side thing that will, that will ruin your life and ruin those around you. But don't, don't play into it. Don't even listen to it, friends. In fact, you and I were, were given a huge victory when, when Jesus said, get away from me, see? Amen. Oh, you guys, and, and you and I would probably like to use, you know, nicknames. <laughs> I don't know what you call the devil in your house. We've got some special hateful names. <laughs> Bottom line is, God doesn't want us to compromise with the devil in any way, shape, or form. He wants you and I to walk in that supernatural miracle thing that he has for us to walk in on a daily basis. Friends, it, it's not just for Sunday and Wednesday. It's not just for special meeting night. It's for every minute of every day. Amen. The Holy Spirit walking with us, and leading us, and guiding us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the bottom line of that, ladies and gentlemen, is that God doesn't want His church to not have Holy Spirit power. If you will, look with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. The Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit 
and of power. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we need. That is what the church and the Christian life is all about. The demonstration of God's Spirit and His power. God doesn't want us to play church, friends. He doesn't want us to just come, sing a few songs, and talk about a couple of verses, and, and uh, go to Denny's. He wants, he wants, he wants to, he wants to show up, and he wants to do signs, wonders, and miracles every time, every day. And friends, let me say it to you another way. He doesn't want you and I to settle for anything less. The Elks Club can do that. The, the Boy Scouts can do that. We were meant and designed to operate in the supernatural. To have blind eyes opened and bodies healed, cancers fall off, uh, relationships healed. Families healed. Lives set on fire by the Holy Spirit. Friends, that's, that's where the Lord wants us to be. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Number three, the Holy Spirit is large and in charge. <laughs> Loud and proud. However else you want to say it. Let me take you back to John 16, 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will tell you things to come. Yeah. Oh, friends, the Holy Spirit is in charge. He's the boss. And He is showing us and leading us and teaching us how to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus. And, and He is teaching us not to be intimidated by anyone or anything and to penetrate this culture with the love of Jesus, with the goodness of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Friends, we have, to, we have to believe that Jesus meant everything He said when He said that in John 16, 13. And our part is to become and to remain completely surrendered to Jesus so the Holy Spirit can do His job. Our job is to just be surrendered. Our job is to wake up every morning and say, Oh Jesus, I'm excited about what you're going to do in my life today. I'm excited about who you're going to bring across my path today. I'm excited about the miracles you're going to flow through me today. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Amen. The last main point that I want you to see from the Word of God this morning is that the Holy Spirit is the convincer slash convictor. Amen. John 16, 8. Just backing up a couple of verses in that wonderful chapter of John 16. And when He is come, He will convict the world of sin and of justice and of judgment. Friends, that is the chief job of the Holy Spirit. It, it's not our job to convince or convict. Anybody else uh, feel like dancing as we, as we uh, think about that? It's not your job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now don't elbow anybody near you, all right? When you think about it. It's not your job to re rehearse my sins to me. Right. <laughs> it's not your job to tell me how bad I am. That's right. It's not your job to tell people they're going to hell. Oh. Oh, we hit a nerve, I think, right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? It's, it's not our job. It's not our job. It's the Holy Spirit's job. 
And, and you know what? Let's say it another way. We do not want to get in the way between the Holy Spirit and somebody. In fact, some of the anger and frustration that you will sense is because the Holy Spirit's been turning up the heat. The Holy Spirit's been stirring that pot in that person's life and, and they are angry or they're frustrated or they're depressed and discouraged by the wreckage of the, of the devil in their lives and, and you just happen to be in their way. And don't you should be careful not to take it personally. No, no, no. Because just recognize, oh, Holy Spirit, you must be turning up the heat on this subject or on this person. When you hear someone, and we'll talk about this maybe a little more another time, when you hear someone say, you're judging me. You're judging me. Please, please look at them and smile. Give them a hug and say, this is, you ask me a question, I'm just delivering the mail. It's between you and God. And, and friends, that is, that is our job. We are mail carriers. M-A-I-L, mail carriers. We are supposed to be carrying the mail. We are being looked to, we are being asked every day to carry the mail. By the Holy Spirit. And then, friends, we get, the, we get the pleasure of planting that seed and watering, maybe doing a little cultivating, doing some harvesting. But, the, but God, the Holy Spirit, is the one that convinces. God's, God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who convicts. Well, I don't know about you, but I felt the, the hot heat of conviction. Where I... I had to get on my face before God and repent. You can imagine what other people are feeling when they start to feel it. Remember, remember how you felt when you first felt the load of your sin before you invited Jesus to come and forgive you? Think about that for a second or two if you would. I know for some of you it's, it's a lifetime ago. <laughs> Praise the Lord! But for others of us, it was not that long ago. Friends, uh, it is the Holy Spirit. It's His job. It's your job just to be sweet and, and plant the seed, water, cultivate, harvest. But the Holy Spirit is the one. Our job is to be light and truth bearers. Light and truth bearers. The light that we shine, the light that we bear, is not our light. It is His light. And sometimes it makes people uncomfortable, friends. Hear me. The, the, the truth that we share is not our truth. It's His truth. It's the Word of God. It is, it is the truth that brings life. It's the truth that, that brings the miracles and brings peace and joy and right relationship with God. Oh, friends, that, that, is, that is one of the beautiful pieces of this puzzle. The Bible says that God has put it in the in the heart and soul of every person to, to know Him, to walk with Him. And if, and if we try to fill that with other things, it is a, it is a, again, a prescription for disaster. But when we fill that place with Almighty God, it is wonderful. It is supernatural. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place, God. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, God. Holy Spirit, 
We want you to be at home in this place. We want you to do everything you want to do, God. We want you to pour out yourself, pour yourself out, God. We want you to do signs, wonders, and miracles. We, Lord, we want to get out of the way so that you can do what only you can do. Save the lost. Heal the hurting. Equip and strengthen believers right now, God. Through your spirit and through your word, equip us and strengthen us. And Lord, let the encouragement of the Holy Spirit and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be all over this place, God. There are those here today who have been beat up out in the world to this week and have been uh, beat up by life and difficulties that they're facing, God. And they've come here to meet with you, Lord, and to have you come and heal and, and, and bandage up their wounds and Lord, we just ask you to do that, Holy Spirit. Help us to get out of the way so you can do that, Lord. Come and do that, Lord. The enemy has beat people up, God. The enemy has lied to people in this very room, this week. And we need your truth, God. Spoken to us by your word and by your spirit. With everyone praying for those around you, please. If you're here today and you would say yes to the Lord, I want the Holy Spirit to work in my life. I, I want to fully surrender so the Holy Spirit can do whatever He wants to with me. I am no longer mine. I am completely His. Can I see your hands quickly up there? Maybe you're here today and you'd say, Pastor John, I, have, I am one of those who's been beat up by the devil. I am one of those who has been fooled by the devil recently. And I need the Holy Spirit to help me not be fooled again. Can I see your hands quickly up and then down? Yeah. Amen. 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 The Lord sees those hands and He is coming to guide and help and bless. I want to ask you a little bit the same, but, but hopefully a, a, a different question that goes like this. Will you make yourself, will you surrender and make yourself available for the Holy Spirit to do signs, wonders, and miracles through you? Can I see your hands? Signs, wonders, yes, 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 yes. Oh, Oh, friends, yes, yes. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes, go on that adventure with the Holy Spirit. Go on that journey with the Holy Spirit. And every day will be a new adventure, a new, a new, a new day with the Holy Spirit leading. Last question I want to ask you is, will you let the Holy Spirit do the convincing and the convicting of those around you? Can I see your hands? In fact, would you would you maybe let's word it differently? Would you raise your hand and say, Pastor John, will you pray for me because I want to stop trying to be the convincer. I want to stop trying to be the convictor. It's not my job. I am not the Holy Spirit, and I I resign from even trying that thing anymore. May the Lord forgive me for trying for the blasphemy of trying to be the Holy Spirit. May I fully surrender and let the Lord do what only He can do in my life. Friends, there is one more question while everybody's praying for those around them. Always want to be faithful to the Holy Spirit to ask this last question. And that is, if you're here today and you do not yet know Jesus, If you're here and you've not
not yet asked Jesus to come into your heart. And you'd like to do that today. Can I see your hands? Quickly up and then down. Or maybe, maybe you're here today and you once had a personal relationship with Jesus, but you've gotten away from him and you want to come back. Can I see your hands quickly up and then down? Pray that prayer of surrender to the Holy Spirit right now. Will you do that? Will you pray that prayer? Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and work in my life. Holy Spirit, I want to be fully, completely, every minute surrendered to you, Holy Spirit. Would you, would you pray for those around you right now about never again being fooled by the enemy? Lord Jesus, we pray for ourselves and for those around us today that we will not be fooled by the enemy trying to lead us astray or getting us to be strong in our own strength, God, but may we be strong in your strength, Lord. May we not be fooled. May we not be tricked, God. May we not allow the enemy to bring confusion or frustration May we, oh God, may we rely on your spirit and on your word and on our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray that prayer about allowing ourselves, allowing the Holy Spirit to do signs, wonders, and miracles through us. Will you do that right now? Holy Spirit, we know that, that you want every one of us to be involved in signs, wonders, and miracles. Lord, you want us to be praying for our friends and our family and our neighbors and seeing you do signs, wonders, and miracles, God. Lord, and so we just, we just sign up, Lord. We surrender to you, God. Do those signs, wonders, and miracles to us, God. Lord, as only you can. Help us, Lord, to stay out of the Holy Spirit's way. Oh, God. Lord, we, we, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us get out of the way and, and let you be the one who convinces and convicts. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to be the Holy Spirit in someone else's life. Lord, we don't like it when somebody else tries to be the Holy Spirit in our lives, and so help us to not try to be the Holy Spirit in their life, in someone else's life. Lord, may we allow you, Holy Spirit, to be the convincer, to be the convictor. Use us, Lord, to plant the seed, to be the light bearers, oh God, to, to shine your light and to share your truth, God. And then, Holy Spirit, you are able to make it bring life. You are able to use the light and the, and the word to bring deliverance, God. You are, God. You are able to. You long to do that, God. We thank you. Seek the Lord. I'd like to ask our prayer team to come and 
get ready to anoint people and pray the prayer of faith.